Welcome to my in-depth Corrupted Gauntlet Guide. In this guide, I will cover the fastest and most consistent methods for preparing and completing the Corrupted Gauntlet. On your screen are some skip points, starting with the gauntlet location, gear setup and boss max hits, tips, tricks and strategies for consistent preparation and boss kills, loot from 100 normal and 25 corrupted gauntlets, and finally the faster advanced method. On your screen are the minimum recommended stats for completing the corrupted gauntlet. It's completable without, though I recommend having at least 74 prayer for piety and rigor. There are two good options for getting there. Either pay 50k coins to move your house directly to Prifidus, or fishing trawler minigame teleport and pay 2k coins to charter there and follow the red path to the gauntlet. The corrupted gauntlet is a harder version of the normal gauntlet where you start off with nothing and have 7.5 minutes to make armor, weapons and food before being teleported to the boss. The boss has a thousand health and uses protection prayers, so you will need some good damage and at least two attack styles. For gear, I'll be showing you the method I use to consistently get tier 2 armor and tier 3 weapons, in addition to a few tips and tricks to speed up resource collection and make the boss fight smoother. Once you get this method down, you can save 2-3 to three minutes each run. I'll briefly go over the new prep strategy, then have the full boss kill, showcasing the exact method. I did a whole bunch of testing for this guide. In general, you will get damage reduction from armor every 3 upgrades, regardless of tier. It also costs an extra resource per tier. This makes perfected armor completely useless for its cost. This is why I recommend starting with attuned armor while you're learning, then downgrading to basic armor as it provides massive defense bonuses and damage reduction for the time spent building it. On your screen are a few tips and facts about the gauntlet. I recommend using shift drop click and setting up hotkeys. You can also save some time by luring and attacking monsters while you're walking and collecting resources, filling vials at fishing pools, and walking towards your next room while fishing. Begin the gauntlet by lighting the middle node and following the green path around the starting room. Your first mission is to collect one weapon frame and at least 90 to 100 shards. Fill the rest of your inventory with a maximum of 9 bark or tyrinum and no more than 4 paddlefish. I always check but not enter the top rooms marked with a blue X on the map for bears, dark beasts or a dragon as I'm right next to it and it can save me some time scouting later in the dungeon. At this point, if I'm missing either a weapon frame or I don't have at least 12 resources, I will check the side room. In this case, I have enough resources and there is no monsters to get a weapon frame, so I ignore the room completely and follow the shorter green path. Although it is very rare, I've had gauntlet runs where I do not see a single monster until the 6th room. As long as you have a solid amount of resources and can find at least 3 tier 1 or 1 tier 2 creature, you should be fine. Otherwise, I recommend restarting the dungeon. Once you're done with that, you should have around five and a half to six minutes on the clock. 
walk to the base, drop your bark, or and tyrinum in three separate piles, make an attuned crystal bow, two vials, and if you have shards, a second teleport. Keep track of which resources are on the floor, drop your axe when you have nine bark, and pickaxe when you have nine ore. Follow the red path through the middle door, checking the red highlighted areas and collecting any remaining ore, bark, and tyrinum that you need to reach 9 of each resource. You should also pick 2 gyme roots and make 2 enol potions by using your pestle and mortar on your crystal shards twice and using that on the vial of water filled with gyme roots. Kill one corrupt dark beast for its corrupt bowstring and either a corrupt dragon or bear for a corrupted orb or spike if you see any. Also pick up a second weapon frame if it drops and fill the rest of your inventory with paddlefish. You should aim to have at least 200 shards, 2 enol potions or gyme roots, 5 paddlefish, and 9 ore, bark, and tyrinum by the end of the red path. You might have to kill a unicorn, wolf, or scorpion to ensure you reach this number of shards. When you're done, teleport back, drop 6 paddlefish, make sure you have at least one teleport crystal, and use the rest of your shards to make an attuned helmet and legs, and also a perfect bow if possible. Also make the plate body if you have extra shards, and drop your remaining bark, ore, and tyridum on the floor. You should now have between 2.5 to 4 minutes left on the clock. Drop your pickaxe, axe, and pestle and mortar. Light the remaining node and follow the blue path, fishing any fishing spots along the way, and killing rats, spiders, and bats for a second weapon frame. The inner path is shorter, allowing you to search more rooms in a smaller amount of time. Depending on what you already have, you will be revealing the rooms on the outer edge and killing a dark beast and either a dragon or bear mini boss. Killing two dark beasts or two bears will also yield the same result. When you have a weapon frame, bowstring, an orb or spike drop, and a full inventory of paddlefish, teleport back, you must have at least a second weapon frame and be back at the base within 1 minute to 50 seconds on the clock. Drop 6 paddlefish, your scepter, and harpoon, and pick up your remaining 3 ore, bark, and tyrinum. Finish making your attuned plate body, perfected corrupted bow, and either perfected corrupted staff or halberd. Drop your corrupted shards and pick up any paddlefish you can before the clock hits 16 to 17 seconds and spam click on the range. It takes around 15 seconds to cook a full inventory of fish, so keep this in mind if you have less food. If you're using the advanced method, the run will look a little bit different. The time it takes to complete a dungeon will largely be decided by how fast you find the dark beast, so this will be our priority. Follow the green path, picking up a weapon frame, 100 shards, 2 gyme leaves, 3 bark, 
or in Tyrinum. Fill the rest of your inventory with paddle fish and reveal every room along the way. Your inventory should look similar to mine. Make an attuned corrupted bow, two vials, dropping the other resources at the base. If you saw a dark beast, dragon, or a bear mini boss, head directly to that room, kill it, and follow the path corresponding to the room you found the mini boss in. Your goal is to get a second weapon frame, bowstring, and 200 shards. Depending on what you see first, you should kill the mini bosses in the order shown on screen. When you finish everything, your inventory will look like this. Now we can get into the boss mechanics. Before you enter, you should turn on in-game sounds to count the attacks. I also provided a link to a 12 second beep timer in the description. Turn on protect range and enter the boss room. His first attack will always be ranged. He will then switch from ranged to mage back to ranged every fourth attack in a pattern. Every 6th attack his prayer will switch and your character will stop moving. If you're not paying attention, this is a good indication that you need to switch weapons. The boss has 4 attacks. His first attack is a standard attack. The range attack looks like a grey oval and the mage attack looks like a red ball. Every time the boss uses magic, there is a chance that it uses a prayer disabling attack. This attack is pink instead of red and also has a different game sound. If you're standing underneath the boss when he's about to attack, he will stomp the ground dealing trample damage. This is the only attack that does not count as one of his four attacks before he switches prayer. It is also not blocked by protect from melee. Occasionally, the boss will stomp the ground emitting crystal-like tornadoes. This attack follows a linear path towards your character, dealing massive damage every 0.6 seconds. This can be awkward for melee weapons when combined with some tile patterns, as you will have to walk around the tiles to avoid getting hit. I recommend eating at this time or when you switch weapons, since there is a few seconds of lost damage. It will also give you some time to turn on your offensive prayers for some extra damage. The highlighted floors are completely safe when they are red, but when they turn orange, you will start to take heavy damage. This damage is reduced by armor, and does roughly the same amount of damage every 0.6 seconds as a single tornado. When attacking while near tornadoes, you should maintain two squares of distance to avoid getting hit after an attack. If you're using the advanced method, you will have to keep track of both your own and the boss's attacks. This can be very hard, so to keep things consistent, I use the in-game sounds to keep track of my own attacks and switch prayers every 12 seconds when I hear the beep timer. The idea is to use your crystal bow for 5 attacks, then use your staff or melee kick to switch the boss's prayer every 6th attack. This allows you to use your corrupted bow for 83% of the fight which will speed up kills by doing more consistent long range damage. When the boss reaches 665 health, the pattern will start to get more complicated and the boss will spawn an additional tornado. At this point you should double check your timer to make sure it's still in sync. The boss will move slightly and delay its attack timer if you walk too close or if you get outside of its attack range. I've been hit up to 56 after missing a prayer, so make sure everything's okay before the next phase of the boss. Oh! <laughs>
At around 332 health, you will have to be very careful where and how you walk to avoid floor and tornado damage. For tornadoes, although it's possible to walk through them multiple times by maintaining constant movement, I find it safer to walk around them, especially in cases where the tornadoes are grouped up and your character has stopped moving. As you can see, the tornado position is inconsistent with what you see on the screen. For this reason, I take massive amounts of damage when I could have just walked around it and avoided everything. There are three problematic floor patterns. The easiest way to avoid them is to position yourself on these corner tiles, giving you a linear path in two directions for movement should the boss spawn some tornadoes. If you do this and maintain a distance of two squares between attacks, you should be able to maintain concentration and result in a kill. Once the boss is dead, you can open the chest and collect your reward. I did a total of 100 normal and 25 corrupted gauntlet kills. The normal loot added up to 6.9 mil with one unique, a crystal weapon shard. The hard kills added up to 3.9 mil with no uniques. The loot was not that great, but it does have quite a few alcohols, including several useful rune and adamant items for emote clues, so this could be useful for Iron Man. Thank you guys for watching my guide. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like or subscribe if you did, and of course, have a wonderful day.